In this video, we'll be talking about Friedreich's ataxia. So Friedreich's ataxia is a rare genetic disorder, which is a progressive neurological disorder affecting heart and the nervous system. So in this case, brain and the heart is the most affected tissue. Other than that, there is difficulty with balance and coordination, which is known as ataxia, muscle weakness, and dysarthria, that means speech-related problems. This particular disease was described by Nicholas Fedrick several years ago. So let us quickly have some highlights about this disease before we delve into the details. When it comes to epidemiology, the incidence rate is 3 to 4 per 100,000 individual. And the onset of sy symptoms is from early childhood or adolescence. And males are somehow more prone to develop Frederick's ataxia compared to the females. When it comes to etiology, this has an autosomal recessive inheritance trait. And the genetic cause of Frederick ataxia is trinucleotide repeat expansion. GAA repeat in the DNA of the frataxin gene located in chromosome 9 is repeated more than usual. And that is the cause of Frederick's ataxia. And the ultimate consequence of that mutation, which lead to an repeat expansion, is a decrease in frataxin protein. Frataxin is useful for mitochondrial functioning. So in absence of frataxin, mitochondrial dysfunction is predominant. And when there is dysregulation of mitochondrial metabolism, there is increased oxidative stress, which lead to basically damage of energy demanding cells such as neuron and cardiomyocytes. Complications involved cardiomyopathy and most of the cases cardiomyopathy is the leading cause of death. Prognosis is not that well. 10 to 15 years after symptoms onset, one, mi uh, one might find out, find out they have predix ataxia and also the individual might require a wheelchair. Anyway, better prognosis is required for this disease, but it's important to note that the life expectancy is reduced due to Frederick's ataxia. When it comes to clinical features, there is progressive ataxia, there is gait instability, there is limb incoordination, dysarthria, heart, and tremor, heart problems and tremors are pretty common in Frederick ataxia. Ocular abnormalities like nystagmus and dysphagia, that means difficulty in swallowing, is also common. Sometimes alongside these primary features, there could be uh, non-motor manifestations, there could be cognitive impairment, there could be psychiatric problems, and there could be peripheral neuropathy. But the most co uh, important complication is the cardiomyopathy, and that lead to the death of the patients. Genetic cause of the Frederick ataxia involves the chromosome 9. In a chromosome 9, there is a gene known as frataxin. Frataxin gene leads to the frataxin protein production, which is crucial for mitochondrial homeostasis or mitochondrial functioning. Frataxin is differentially expressed in different tissues. It is highly enriched in metabolically active tissues like neuron, heart, and pancreas. And it is important for the functionality of each of these tissues. In a moment, it would be clear. Frataxin gene has several GAA trinucleotide repeats within it. A normal level is basically something around 7 to 35 repeats. If the repeat number is more than 100, then it's a pathological situation. And that lead to a mutation in this gene which would reduce the protein production. Now, in absence of frataxin or reduced frataxin, the mitochondrial functioning is abrogated, which is detrimental for cells like neuron, heart, etc. Because if we zoom into the mitochondria, we would see there are electron transport chain and the component of the electron transport chain, for example, NADH dehydrogenase would actually use the iron sulfur clusters. These iron sulfur clusters are actually used to relay neuron, uh, relay electrons from uh, the f from basically NADH to ultimately CoQ and this kind of flow of electron via iron sulfur cluster is crucial for the proper functioning of the electron transport chain. In absence of frataxin or reduced frataxin, the iron could not be incorporated into these iron sulfur cluster. That leads to a problem. So obviously, this would abrogate the uh, ATP production uh, uh, in the mitochondria. So ATP production would be reduced, mitochondrial output would be reduced, which is detrimental for the 
cells which are metabolically active like neuron. So obviously ferrous cannot be incorporated in the iron sulfur cluster. Instead ferrous helps in the oxidation of the oxygen and lead, which lead to oxygen radicals. So increased level of ROS can damage proteins, membrane lipids and that would have a detrimental consequences altogether for a cell. Also there could be DNA damage associated with ROS. When it comes to neurological complications, there are several locations in the body which are affected. But most prevalently, the affected regions are the corticospinal tract, the dorsal root ganglion and the dentate nucleus in the cerebellum. Other complications include cardiac complications, that means cardiomyopathy. The cardiac muscle cells are highly uh, dependent on mitochondrial function because they require energy all the time to pump the heart. So if there is a mitochondrial dysfunction, there would be cardiac arrhythmia and several other cardiac co complications, which are the prevalent cause of death. Pancreatic cells are also very uh, active and they secrete stuff such as insulin. So insulin production would be decreased if the pancreatic cells, pancreatic beta cells are not able to have enough amount of ATP. That might lead to or enhance the chance of getting a diabetes. So let's talk about the mode of inheritance. As we mentioned earlier, the mode of inheritance is autosomal recessive. That means one fourth is the chance that the next generation would be affected. When it comes to diagnosis, gate examination, examination of the family pedigree would be useful. But the key way of detection is by genetic testing, by looking at these trinucleotide repeat expansion within the frataxin gene. So let's talk about the treatment options. There are no definite cure for this Frederick's ataxia, but okay, physical therapy, speech therapy, genetic counseling, and supportive medication could make the life of the patient a little bit better. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in next video.